dear business owners, CXOs, managers, friends and students. Welcome to Billion Hopes. This is Sandeep Manudhane Sandy bringing you AI for Real Impact. So many businesses try implementing AI and they get moderately successful or they fail. A key reason research shows is the preconceived notion that generative AI tools are largely all there is to AI. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Today we will investigate what exactly is enterprise AI because all of us want our businesses to be successful. Whether it's a small or a medium scale company or a giant enterprise or a multinational, including AI in your workforce in an integrated embedded way is what the next five years of disruptive change is all about. AI is upon us. It's not a choice now, we just have to do it. And if we have to do it, we better do it right. To do it right, the preconceived notion that merely deploying generative AI tools will see us through is a self-defeatist notion. So let's get started. Why enterprise AI is way beyond generative AI. So what is enterprise AI? In any company, any business, any organization, any institution, AI which is embedded deeply into the entire fabric of work is enterprise AI. It is not just one or two tools which two or three percent people are using. No, not at all. So that is enterprise AI. And what is generative AI? All the chatbots and LLM that we use to generate text, images, audio, video, code, etc. at an individual consumer retail level. To conflate the two is a very serious mistake managers have been making and they have been paying a big price for it which is actually quite tragic. What's going wrong? Well, this is what is going wrong. Generative AI is merely the tip of the iceberg called AI. Now iceberg here in a positive sense, let's call it a mountain. But this is a good uh, metaphor so we used it. Generative AI perhaps is the 10 or 15% tip of the story, but the real enterprise AI generally lies hidden from the public view. But since you are a CXO or a business owner or a manager or an MBA in charge of AI transformation, you of course have begun to realize that generative AI is just a small part of the story, yes or no? So what are the other seven components? Let me take you through each one of them carefully. Enterprise AI has seven components. These are the seven, as you can see clearly. And generative AI is the one that is visible because many of our employees, staff members might be using it. We might be displaying what they have created with it because our annual reports, our management MIS dashboards, etc. might be created using generative AI. So those are the flashy things. They are visible. The public sees them, the board of directors sees them and we also are happy with the quality of stuff. But then that's not what enterprise AI is. So let's focus on enterprise AI. There are seven parts to it. The first part is it runs on deep data infrastructure. Enterprise AI actually requires data engineering pipelines, data quality, governance, and many other aspects. In large companies where data is being generated on a real-time basis, you have data warehouses, data lakes, and in an AI-first era, we need to have an integrated strategy. So this is the first component of enterprise AI. This session is extremely useful for students pursuing their graduation or post-graduation in management or those who are in AI and ML education and about to enter into the project management field or the project execution, designing, deployment field and definitely those who are practicing professionals because you are now confronting these things on a daily basis, yes or no? The second is that enterprise AI actually solves operational problems. It is not just about creating images and videos and text and some minor code here and there. It solves real problems, forecasting, optimization, anomaly detection, for example, credit card usage anomaly, which can then trigger a potential warning call, alarms, etc., etc. Personalization, fraud prevention, routing, demand planning, and it is a mixture of classical MI, 
predictive modeling, statistical AI, etc. The third part of enterprise AI, DA manager, CXO, owner, is it integrates with business processes and legacy systems. What are legacy systems? You had some computer ERP system built 15 years ago on some earlier programming language and it worked very well. Your company did very well. You have used it. You have milled it to the maximum. The company that made that ERP for you has been giving you annual updates, support, maintenance, fine. In this AI first era, you have brought in proper AI tools. Now you cannot really scrap that ERP overnight. So either that ERP maker integrates AI in that ERP already or you do something to integrate your new tools with the legacy systems. So legacy systems are your existing old ERPs and this will require middleware, connectors, workflow automation, orchestration and there are dedicated vendors that specialize in just doing this. So a large part of a CXO or a business manager or an owner's job now in an AI first era is to exactly identify these needs. Where do I need these additional vendors to link everything up? And if you find the right vendor, the job is much, much easier. As you know, in business, in running any enterprise, having a set of reliable, talented, qualified vendors who are also price effective, if possible, is perhaps a winning guarantee. It requires governance, security, and risk controls. Now, dear friends, AI governance has emerged as a huge area. In fact, it is spawning a complete series of careers. So many people are now gravitating towards careers in AI governance. Today, I was having a chat with a gentleman who is into American AI governance in a very large insurance company. And he explained the kind of challenges they are facing with the multi-state AI governance and regulatory structures coming up and why they expect the White House to actually remove a lot of those problems. So AI governance is critical to every company internally to make the enterprise AI successful because for that you need the guardrails, you need all the safety systems and it should be in consonance with the national AI policy. So that brings us to the next question. Does the country, whichever country you are operating in, if you're assuming, I'm assuming you're operating in one country right now. What is the national AI policy of that country? What is the law governing AI? Or is the normal civil and criminal law being applied to AI issues also? So that's something that the legal team has to do a fine combing, fine detailing of that. The fifth part of enterprise AI is scalable deployment and monitoring. If your company is a rapidly growing company, whatever AI systems you deploy should be scalable. If they were designed to handle 10 transactions per second today, and in a year from now, you expect the transaction scale to be 35 per second, then the architecture of the AI system today should be capable of handling that seamlessly, effortlessly. The servers at the back end should be automatically upgraded and the increased demand should be met. But that doesn't happen, as I said, on its own. The architecture has to ensure that. The sixth part of enterprise AI is it must create measurable business value. If you do not get business value out of AI, why should you even be doing AI? In a very interesting talk I recently had with a business owner, the end of that discussion, the consulting assignment was that he, his company actually did not need AI. Whatever they were doing was fully optimized at this point in time. Doing AI just for the sake of doing AI because everyone else is doing AI is also a defeatist paradigm. You should not be falling for it. So a good consultant a good mentor will honestly tell you in case you do not need AI. So in what conditions would you not need AI? Let's just brainstorm on that a bit. Your internal processes are very well defined. A lot of them are very repetitive in nature. And your present automation systems are capable of handling it. And there is no additional insight which can be gleaned from it. Then perhaps you don't even need AI. 
your enterprise is currently stabilized at a certain revenue level, top line, bottom line levels, and you do not expect any 2x or 3x in the coming years, and you are happy with it. It's not a written rule that your company must always 2x and 3x and 4x. If you're happy with 1x for the next 10 years, good, good for you. There's nothing wrong in it. There's nothing amoral or immoral about it. At least I'm totally clear about it. In that case, maybe you do not need AI at all. Of course, if there is a disruptive AI tool which can cut your operational costs substantially, then you should take a relook at it. Is this point clear? So I always, you know, talk in these realistic and practical terms. Does the enterprise even need AI? That's a question we should always start with. Because otherwise, then you have already made a case for AI and then you go into exploring the AI tool. So you'll always find some good AI tool in that case. But if you ask the fundamental existential question, do we even need AI? And if you do the assessment from that neutral perspective, maybe you don't. Good for you, good for you, good for you. No need to do any disruptive change right now. I hope that is clear. An enterprise AI is a multi-technology stack. It will not be just one thing. It will be predictive AI, prescriptive AI, optimization engines, traditional machine learning, robotic process automation, knowledge graphs, etc. Generative AI enhances it. It does not replace it. Now, for CXOs and business owners and managers new to the field of AI, I mean, Almost everyone is new to it. This revolution, if we can call it a revolution, has just happened, right? So all this is pretty new. If you are not exposed to these terms, this is a good time to get exposed. That's why these sessions. I hope you have already subscribed to my YouTube channel. I hope you have already subscribed to the newsletter that we shoot twice every week. It's a free newsletter. Please, the link is there in the comments. Make sure that you and your entire team subscribe to it. You have the best reading material right in your inbox twice a week. Very well curated newsletter. So please make sure that you have subscribed to it as well as the channel. And we also have a WhatsApp channel that you might want to take a look at. So my dear friends, generative AI is just one part of the AI story. The real story lies beneath which the common public may not see. You have a deep data infrastructure. You have a focus on solving operational problems, not just generating content. You have an AI which integrates with business processes and your old ERP, which is called legacy system. It requires a governance council. Your company, the moment you deploy AI, will need a governance council. It could be a one-person council. It could be the CXO herself or himself that is the council. But you need to have one because you need to write down the rules that your company follows while deploying AI. So that is what the governance paradigm is all about. You need scalable deployment and monitoring, creating measurable business value, as I said, otherwise, why are we even doing AI at all? And finally, a multi-technology stack, not just one aspect. I hope you have enjoyed the session. There are beautiful solutions I have for all the business owners, CXOs, managers, and good learners. My AI Force Multiplier course is a beautiful full-day masterclass where we cover the entire gamut of important things needed for enterprise AI in 12 solid segments, one hour each. You can do it in one full day. You can do it over one week. There are three or four schedules which are uh, allowed in that. You can recommend it in that. And you can immediately hit the ground running. For a lot of managers, the problem is they literally know nothing about AI, which is very natural. You are so busy with your work, you never got the time to study AI. Now, this is the course which can change it. The enrollment link is given in the comment. Check it out if you're a CXO. And you feel a very strong need for a personalized mentoring. That solution is also available. Check out the details of CXO AI mentoring from the link given in the comment. So what did we learn today? We learned that AI is upon us. We learned that certain companies may not need AI at all. Good for them. And I gave you the conditions under when or under which you will actually not be needing AI. We also saw why certain companies definitely need AI. And the mistake that managers make, assuming generative AI is equal to company AI, enterprise AI. Do not make that mistake. Keep your minds completely open to possibilities and over the next one year, make a strategy for implementation and just go ahead and do that.
This is Sandeep Manudhane, Sandy bringing you AI for real impact. See you soon.